Hey there, it's a 2nd of August 2021 on top of the hour. A very good Monday evening to you. My name is Dereva Hile. We welcome to the broadcast. Kimilili Member of Parliament Didimas Barasa was released on a cash bail of 100 thousand shillings after he was arrested for assaulting a contractor the mp was held at the kimilili police station on monday for allegedly beating up a local contractor who was demanding a 3.4 million shillings and paid dues after constructing five classrooms at a school in kamukuya ward the contractor cam musician stephen masinde popularly known as steve k obtained a p3 form accusing the kimilili member of parliament of assaulting him Barasa said he had always known Stephen Masindi as a musician and was surprised to hear him demanding pay, payment as a contractor. In a video that went viral, Barasa is seen arguing with the contractor before slapping him when he arrived at a school in Kamukuya Ward to open classes built by the National Government Constituency Fund. The case will be heard on the 27th of September 2021. <laughs> Quite interesting. Now, Senate Speaker Ken Lusaka has called on county leaders to discharge their mandate with a high sense of accountability. Lusaka said leaders entrusted with public resources must always think of the wealth of the people they represent before appropriating such funds. Lusaka, who was speaking during the launch of the Baringo County Assembly 2021 to 2025 a strategic plan said that the ex essence of devolution was to assist the people from disadvantaged counties to grow economically but not for leaders to become self catered on the other hand county assembly's forum chairperson and home said devolution is under threat by external and internal forces who are unhappy with its success meanwhile narok county woman representative soipan kudate has called on po political leaders to focus on uniting the country than dividing kenyans for their selfish interest but not for the many years you have served but the mark that you have left there the essence of devolution was to assist counties that had been disadvantaged like Baringo. I served here and what the, His Excellency the Governor is saying is true. You have been crappling with matters of insecurity, which has hampered development. Now with the devolution, you have an opportunity, you have resources to be able to do what you want to do. Let us not have in any way that Senate would watch and see devolution being killed. Kuna watu walitoka Nairobi, wakakuja huko counties at a ma governor and they are still trying to kill devolution when they are at the counties mimi nikiona wa kenya wako peaceful uh, wa kenya wako uh, watu ambao wanaelewa misimu za siasa na ningependa kusema ya kwamba saa ingine sisi viongozi ndio tunaonekana tukifanya preemption ya kwamba kuna vita Through the Coast Development Authority, CDA, the government has embarked on the construction of a 142 million shillings earthfield dam water pan in Bura Galma 
Galmagala Division of Fafi constituency in Garissa County to cushion residents from drought. When complete, the dam will serve approximately 69,000 households for domestic, livestock and small-scale irrigation. Speaking when he visited the project site, CDA Managing Director Dr. Mohamed Kainan termed the project as a game changer in addressing the perennial water shortage that has been lingered the region. Currently, residents are forced to endure long walks to access water for both the livestock and domestic use. This is as the effects of climate change continue to ravage the country. The water pan has a capacity of harvesting 350,000 cubic meters of rainwater. It will have to be used for the community purpose, that is household domestic use. It will have to be used for livestock. It will also be available to wildlife. And, and even for smallholder irrigation. I have Dr. Kainan cause authority of development to let the dam kubwa belin to likwa na shida to likwa to maji green mara maji blue paka watoto wanakuwa na shida ya kolera kolera. Na hii muradi itasaidia watu wa Garumagara kwa sababu ya kiangazi ambayo imekuwa ikikuwa kwa muda kwa hii area. A cross-section of public service vehicles in the Gusi region has announced its preparedness to tackle the Delta variant of COVID-19 spread through a stakeholder's engagement to ensure that passengers have their face mask on, sanitized before boarding vehicles and that they are not overloaded. Following the petition, the association and the Transport Ministry Cabinet Secretary uh, the association chairman Okongo Moses stressed the urgent need by the PSV crew to observe COVID-19 containment measures as they transported learners to school this week. The sentiments came amid a stern warning from the government of a violation of observing social distance rule, among other protocols in the PSV sector. We have social distance na parakoa tuhakikisha kwamba kila mmocha anayeingia ndani ya gari amefaa parakoa Elsewhere, a section of leaders drawn from the three belligerent communities in Masabit County has vowed to work together and restore peace among its members. The leaders, among them elders from Borana, Gabra and Rindile, that could initially not see eye to eye to each other, revealed to lead a peace campaign among members of the three communities. After a two-day meeting in Nanyuki organized by the Northern Rangeland Trust and mediated by the former National Cohesion and Integration Commission Chairman Francis Olekaparo, elders who drew from Borana, Gabra and Rendile communities resolved to reach out to their respective communities and end the long-term conflict among their members. Speaking shortly after the meeting, the leaders say the truce was long overdue following recurrent conflict among members of the communities for years. Previous reconciliation meetings have failed to bear fruits, leading to constant retaliatory attacks. Viongozi omba wote, viongozi wote, waina tofauti, viongozi wa kisiasa, viongozi wa dini, viongozi wa jamii, viongozi wa kinamama, viongozi wa vijana, viongozi wa aina tofauti tofauti. Tuungane, tushikane mikono pamoja, tuakikishe ya kwamba uhasama, uoga, chuki, imekua kitu ya historia katika marsabit. Omba wote. E, tuko hapa, nyanyuki kwa siku tatu, kikawa siku tatu kwa sababu amani. Na tumeongea mengi, tumekubaliana, e, tusema... Eh, wale ambao wametoka kwao wote warudi kwao nyumbani wakae na amani na mali yao eh, maisha yao yote tumekubaliana wazee na area chief ndo wata watashughulikia watatunzwa eh, na hatakuwa na shida nyingine baadaye na tulisema Kazi ambaye yote tungepa, tukirudi huko, tufanye, tunaomba, serkali kuu, serkali ya county na, eh, na NGOs ambaye wako grassroots, watu support ili amani ipike marsabit.
sisi kama jamii ya rendile ile kitu tuliona afadhali tukirudi nyumbani tusimamicha sio afadhali tukirudi nyumbani tutasimamicha ni mambo ya uhisi ya mifuko kwa sababu hii mambo ya uhisi ya mifuko hata mara mingi from Masabitu take a very short break it's a commercial break when we come back we have more stories lined up for you stay with us Thank you for staying with us. We move on with our stories tonight. The final registration for this year's KCP and KCSC examination has been extended to August 14, 2021. The exercise was set to conclude on 31st July 2021, but it has now been extended by two weeks. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magua said in a statement Monday that the two-week extension is to allow schools to ensure all candidates are registered in the spirit of leaving no child behind in the education sector. Professor Magua directed head teachers and principals to ensure that all bona fide candidates are registered for the examination within the final two weeks. By July 31st, 2021, a total of 1,218,892 candidates in 28,248 centers and 824,392 candidates in 10,384 centers had been registered for the KCP and KCSC examinations respectively. The Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, KEMSA, has constituted the COVID-19 Management Rapid Response Team to ensure the efficient supply of personal protective equipment, PPE, among other medical supply items. KEMSA Acting CEO Edward Njoroge said in a statement that the authority is ready to dispatch COVID-19-related medical supplies to all counties once orders are placed. As directed by Health Cabinet Secretary Mutai Kagwe yesterday, Njoroge confirmed the authority is well placed to respond to the immediate health facilities needed for COVID-19 management. He said they are banking on information technology systems to ensure speedy order fulfillment to more than 8,000 health facilities countrywide. Already, KEMSA has optimized its distribution system to ensure doorstep delivery at all health facility levels nationally. The, the authority has also decentralized its distribution channel into four zones to enhance service delivery by reducing turnaround time. The confirmation comes at a time health facilities across the country are wit witnessing a surge in COVID-19 cases. And away from Kenya, Zambia's President Edgar Lungu has ordered the deployment of the military to suppress electoral violence and ahead of the 12th August general elections amid criticism by the opposition and other groups. Lungu said troops had already been deployed to some areas in the capital, Lusaka, and would be sent to other areas in the country if the situation demands so. The All People's Congress APC party says the move to involve the army has intended to cause fear and intimidation among the opposition. There have been incidents of violence by the ruling party and opposition supporters across the country in the run-up to the vote. The president is running for a second term in the elections. His main opponent is Hakende Hichilema, who has unsuccessfully contested for the presidency five times. And in sports, Kenya's Faith Kipegon, Edna Jepitok, and Winnie Chebet qualified for the semi finals of the women's 1500 meters race after coming through the respective qualifying rounds of the Olympic Games. Edna Jepitok sailed through the semis despite finishing 12th after a fall. Jepitok was included in the semi finals after an appeal by Team Kenya. The qualifying round was clinched by world champion Dutch Sifan Hassan who clocked four, four minutes, 15 seconds, has Jessica Hall of Australia finished second. USA Pure, Pure St. Pierre was that. This afternoon, Abra, Abraham Kibobot and Benjamin Kagan ran in the men's 300 meters steeplechase final, while Helen Obiri, Lillian Kasait and Agnes 
Jerob will be in the women's 500 meters final. The Malkia strikers face Brazil in their final group A match at 3.45, which happened. Nikimpia Super Race, ni qualify to the semi-final. Because I'm a quelli in the Olympic Yanku Yakwanda as a mother. Na io in an Fraisha Sana. Na io in an epea motisha ni ni ningangane uh ili my daughter fry also. Yes. Because I'm a quelli I kwa raisi, when a maternal leave, a la fukurudi, who kwa strong pia like before. But Nashkuru Mungu, Nashkuru Coach Wangu, management wangu. Uh, my husband, at least I'm in this idea. At least, pack up and deliver. Nashukuru mungu. It's not the end of your life. You can end a maternal leave. Um, you can have good people around you. You can manage. You can come back strongly. Yes. So the rest of the day, it was not tough because we are looking for semis qualification for to semi final. If if can body can respond well, I pray God. Tell me so that I can get to the final. The weather today, it's so hot. It's so hot. So we try our best because I never run in there. And looking into COVID-19 situation in Kenya today, 591 people tested positive for COVID-19 according to the Ministry of Health from a sample size of 4,737 tested in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate is now at 12.5%. Total confirmed positive cases are now 204,271 and cumulative tests so far conducted are 2 million 141 42000 sorry 309 in terms of distribution by counties nairobi has 422 mombasa 34 kiambu 19 wasengishu 17 garissa 14 muranga 10 kirinyaga kirinyaga and nyeri have nine cases busia 7 narok 6 Kajado, Laikipia, Machakos, Kakamega have four cases each with Baringo, Mandera, Embu, Nakuru, Nyandarwa having three cases while Siaya, Kisi, Homa, and Kisi have two cases, Homabe and Kericho have one case each. Today, 561 patients have recovered from the disease, 469 from the home-based isolation and care program, while 92 are from various health facilities. Total recovery now stands at 189,669, 151,146are from home-based care isolation program and 38,546 are from various health facilities. 24 patients have succumbed to the disease, all of them being late deaths reported after conducting facility record audits on diverse dates in the months of May, June and July 2021. This now pushes the cumulative fatalities to 3,970. And finally, 1,000... 483 patients are currently admitted in various health facilities countrywide, while 4,021 are under the home-based isolation and care program. 189 patients are in ICU, 45 of whom are on ventilatory support and 93 on supplemental oxygen. 51 patients are under observation and 461 patients are separately on supplemental oxygen with 419 of them in general wards and 42 in high dependency unit. We appreciate your company thus far. The story of the COVID-19 situation brings uh, our bulletin to the end. My name is Dereva Hillary. See you again soon. Coming next after me is Y Mashariki with DJ Teska Kalondo and Ken Lerbis. Enjoy the rest of our programmings. Have a good night. See you again. Bye.